through them, but um, we'll be updating the titles, guys, and actually getting into the match here. This isn't the round of 64. This will be the round of 16, but it is still a best of one nonetheless, and it is going to be BX3 as I uh, need to update these titles versus the Mustache, and Monocle is the other team that is going to be taking on BX3. And again, I don't know too much about Mustache Monocle, though I have watched them once or twice before, so um, they aren't an entirely new team. I've seen them around on the bracket going into the round of 16, but uh, not too much past that. Ooh, looks like we're having issues right now in game. Well, hopefully he can get in before the timer. We don't have to go back to the lobby, but we will find out in just a moment. We'll go ahead and get the player introductions done regardless. That way we can at least talk about Overwatch strategy theory and there's stuff like that as we have in stay. Going to be picking up a Reaper. See if he sticks with that. Of course, it might be being changed. There's the DC. We have Kaland. We'll just go ahead and do the players. We do have Naka. For, and again, this is all for the side of Mustache and Monocle Hype. Looks like to be their hit scan player. And the Mikolau is going to be picking up a tank over for the side of good old BX3. I'll go ahead and let you go ahead and introduce that. And, uh, and they all <laughs> they all ended up leaving. Damn. Uh, but yeah, right now. Oh, man. Severn yeah. on the May. Globe, Average Jonas. Uh, who else is on that yeah, squad? Yeah, it was too bad and Chi Ultraviolet. Yeah. I'm going to have to go ahead and switch over to the caster screen, unfortunately, though, as uh, needing to figure out what's going on there. Yeah, it looked like it was something wrong with uh, ESL wire going in. Um, yeah. Maybe crashing it, but yeah. Okay, well, I'm just going to go ahead and figure out. They're going to go ahead and make a new lobby, I assume, is going to be the situation. Yeah, they're all leaving, so we will just go ahead and leave this as well. And... Uh, we get back into the new lobby as soon as it's made up, guys. Unfortunately, technical issues are abounding today, as I like to say. When it rains, it pours. When you have one issue, another one is bound to follow. But ideally, we will be getting into this game, get it uh, brought to you guys, and then immediately after that, we'll be getting into the winner. And uh, again, I would, if I had to be personally betting on it, I would definitely be putting um, B Fly through against either one of the opponents that would end up playing against them, but. Uh, at the end of the day, we'll, we'll end up seeing what happens, but the round of 8 that could end up happening here between BX3 and uh, B-Fly could be quite an exciting round of 8 to start the uh, upper, I guess you could say, the, the elimination, uh, you know, the, the end part of the tournament, the beginning of the best ofs, I guess is the best way to say it then. Yeah, no, the top part of the bracket seems honestly pretty uh, pretty tough. Uh, Redskins up there, Noble Team Gamers Origin, and up there as well, Pretz, um bottom of the bracket Ewoks uh, resurrection uh, the other team all, all very strong squads honestly outside the bracket honestly it might be a little stronger in my personal opinion but um, it'll be great to see a lot of these teams all these teams have kind of made their uh, short appearances uh, I remember Redskin also competing in one of the open qualifiers gamer origins obviously the old um, the new roster I guess the they used to be Brover watch uh, that got picked up by gamers origin Pretz has had a great uh, outstanding performances as it goes to gamers cups so a lot of teams that you know you can see you see a lot of in the past and um hopefully to see more in the future yeah no i, I agree and we are going to be getting into dorado as the map as we, we we were loaded in into it so spectators have seen it um our reviewers have seen it so i guess we should kind of switch gears of course we did see king's row for the first map but it was kind of like an eternity ago we'll go ahead and say that but we did see um the side of B-Fly kind of route bad example as that's kind of what we would have expected but Dorado is a much different map um there's a lot of different talking points on it but I'll go ahead and lead it off with um I, I guess a question in a meta related sense reunited and then of course Envious has been another team that's done it but it started to break out a more aggressive style of offense on Dorado that kind of says you're all in if you lose the fight anyways on the market at the choke point why not just go all in all in and go ahead and hold on those two rooftops above the spawn and set up using a much more aggressive position uh, you know what's your opinion on that and you know what do you think about the, the, that evolution of the meta and whether or not that's actually the better way to go about it than to hunker down in the kind of enclosed defensive area that is the market. Yeah, so like right now, um, honestly what I feel like is just on certain teams that they feel they can take the aim duels and win early on, obviously you uh, you hold that point very early on. Envious does the same thing on uh, Watchpoint Gibraltar, which it was almost like a courtesy for teams to let you get to that first checkpoint, like right underneath, uh, right underneath the bridge and you know, for the longest time I didn't even 
realized that was a checkpoint. But that used to be part of the meta, and now teams are starting to put pressure on. It's just because in terms of a stopwatch kind of map, if you can delay them for, let's say, like a minute, two minutes on that very easy initial push that teams are very normally uh, very used to getting, uh, it obviously works wonders for you. And these teams have a lot of faith in their DPS. They have a lot of faith that they can win these one-on-one -on -one fights. So if you feel like you can take the fights to them and you're not going to get punished, uh, for being that far up front, then go ahead, take it. Uh, there's no reason against it. I guess in terms of more like secure styles, more like reliable styles, I recommend that if you don't, if you're kind of 50-50 on whether or not you can win all the fights, uh, definitely just hold the second point. Um, stalling is as good as uh, as good as you can do on defense oftentimes. So uh, both approaches are very uh, solid. I just feel like right now some teams just feel more confident in their DPS to uh, be able to hold that first point. I can agree with that, especially when you look at the teams that are kind of pushing that right now. Of course, Reunited and Envious, not only would I, you know, they're definitely the stronger teams in the region, Envious, it would be a joke not to say that they are one of the stronger teams, if not, you know, the strongest team. They're on a, I think it's 52 games they went out to dinner for recently to celebrate a uh, win streak. They are absolutely dominating it up, and I think... Uh, Joshi put it really well himself uh, recently that this is also based upon a uh, or, or hexagrams or one of the two that um, it, 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 it was a continuation in some ways of their closed beta performance before they got picked up onto the um, side of Envious as an organization. So the two teams that are doing it definitely have strong faith and are a little bit more of a I, I would even put them in the you know cocky boat at the end of the day you do want to be more egotistical more uh you know confident in your own play as a, as a competitor to be able to have that uh that ability to perform and go uh, i i guess you know not be scared not make mistakes not hesitate etc but maybe that echoes to your point that those two teams are the ones that are looking at it but we'll go ahead and get into some quick introductions so we can continue more into the analysis we have hype going to be picking up mccree looks like pretty standard from before naka going to be picking up that zinyada and insta going to be picking up the reaper we have mikalau over here on a winston colsty on the reinhardt and last but not least the lucio is going to be picked up by Kalinge. and if you want to go ahead and introduce the x3 yeah, so you have Sedburn on the Pharah, uh, Widowmaker will be run by Average Jonas, uh, Ultraviolet on the Torbjorn, uh, Too Bad on the Genji, Globe on the Zenyatta, and she on the Zarya. And Sedburn actually changes back to McCree, you know, game my hopes up a little bit about seeing some more Pharah here. Yeah, I know. We'll probably will be ending up seeing the Torbjorn, though it could be pretty uh, top keck, I guess is one way to say it. A dank means to see the good old death payload with the turret Reinhardt. You can even throw the Bastion on as well, but that's not going to be the case. We will be getting into the actual matches. The stopwatches are running. And of course, you guys will be seeing a time to beat for the next offense, but for now, all that matters is, of course, whether or not the teams are able to convert or the offense is able to convert. If BX3 is not able to get the payload to the end, then the stopwatch will not be incurred at all. There's yeah, no kill so far. They're playing very safe. Honestly, they had Mikola, I think, going for the big flank, but just got spotted. So that might be what their big plan is. Mm, there's an initiation, though. Defense definitely gets a better deal out of it as Hype gets himself a double kill. Mikola, Insta, going to answer as well. Naka, it's pretty easy to get those kills as, of course, once they got the first two, they just basically surrounded him, collapsed on them, and that was just good team fighting, it felt, coming out of the defense right there. As uh, yeah. Good flashbang, actually, from Hype is probably the best way to put it, I, I saw. Yeah, this point is just so hard to take because you're basically going through a very large choke point and mm -hmm. right now everyone's kind of hiding trying to play you for angles right now. Well, the offense is going to go ahead and try again. Average Jonas will take out Mikolo to start it out, but and stay with the double kill right to rebuttal. And uh, Anaka hype and stay again. The kill feed is just lighting up with the defense right now. And BX3 is having a very hard time getting through this. I mean, you know, normally, I guess the default thing to say is, of course, they should be looking for some different looks, maybe looking for a flank over by the secret side, maybe going upstairs and coming down that way. But I mean, based on their lineup or, you know, based on what they've done so far, what would you like to see from them? Honestly, it's just honestly, that last fight was just because uh, they got a great Reinhardt ultimate. Uh, but I think honestly, there's not much you can really change here on offense. Maybe you want to go for the Ana to get that really hard push in, or maybe you want to try something else. But it looks like they're just trying to flank around from the side right now to test that uh, back entrance. There's going to be a dead eye from Hype though, as you say that it does get flash banged up though, and there's the Death Blossom coming out from Insta. It doesn't seem to get too much damage as there was the Transcendence from Globe, or no, never mind. It was just used now. 
as they were able to heal it and negate it, maybe just booped away from uh, by the Lucio. And so far, two for two trade as we are in the, uh, the, the skirmish. And stay going to be still alive, fighting out against Globe. Gets the shots, takes him out as Chi goes ahead and trades out. But Hype is still alive and he gets a kill onto Suburban, pushing forward. He's going to take out Chi. Now he's looking over onto the Reaper, who's in Wraith form. Gonna be on cooldown for a little bit longer. Gonna try to hide behind the Reinhardt barrier, but that's not good enough when you have that little ledge to peek over in McCree. Gonna go ahead and clean that up and take him out. And I agree with you that they definitely need to, you know, at least look at a different positioning. They went through the stairs over there. But uh, maybe it's too early to be considering a change in the lineup. But, I mean, that's another question. When do they consider major changes here? It's been two and a half minutes and they haven't gotten anywhere. When is a team, do you say, it's time to scrap it and go for something different? And sorry, there is going to be an initiation. As Graviton Surge goes out, catching on 3-4. Will it be any big kills? All of Ultraviolet with the Death Blossom. Suburn going to get the dead eye with the triple kill. And she's going to go ahead and clean up Hyde. Instay goes down as well. And to punctuate the point, the team kill horn will be sounded. And the defense will be cleaned up and offense will move forward. So they didn't need a change in heroes. They did just need to use those ultimates. But I guess another question to pose. It took them three minutes. I wouldn't be too happy with that as a player. Taking three minutes on the offense from the first point. But ugh, yeah. it just feels weird. I mean, it does. And that's kind of like the main add to a lot of teams are running into. Where you don't know when to switch. Like, let's say your ultimate's at like 60%. What exactly do you do? Do you wait on for uh, holding on knowing that you can probably clear the point? Yeah, so that's, I think that's what they did. I mean, uh, luckily they had three ultimates going up at that time, so that's kind of what helped them clear it. But maybe if they changed to Ana maybe a couple seconds earlier, or maybe a few minutes earlier, maybe that thing would have been able to clear in two minutes or something like that. I completely agree. Death Blossom, though, coming out so far from the uh, defense and stay getting some good damage in. As Nock is in the background, we're on his camera doing a lot of damage. He's going to go ahead and switch into that transcendence to keep his team alive as Hyde gets a double kill with that Deadeye. Now it's just going to be Ultraviolet caught out alone in the background. He's going to be quickly... And swiftly taken care of as hype takes out globe and miklo in the background did take out cheese switched over to a diva so they are looking for something quite a bit different actually on that note the diva and winston double initiation combo but i i feel kind of weird about this without a genji i feel like they're running a double initiation tank without any assassin here to take advantage of the presence that those heroes create yeah, no, exactly. Actually, I think I think what's been good is average joint switching onto the Reinhardt because, believe it or not, it's HYP who's really doing a lot of the damage. They're just not not winning the McCree duels on Severn's side. It looks like there will be some damage going out, but really offense hasn't gotten too much done. We do see Average Jonas in the background. Low on HP does get his Primal Rage off at the last second. Saburn getting himself a double kill. Chi going to be able to take out Colsty. And while we're on the monkey, there's definitely a lot going good for the offense here. As there's only two members remaining. Naka and Hyper going to switch over to them. 93% on that Transcendence as he's taking a lot of damage on the way out. He will end up being cleaned up. And that's going to be a stagger. They did get the tag from Hype, and there's going to be the shot onto Saburn. They got the Discord Orb onto him, so they did know his position. We're able to find him out and take him out. And that's going to be a pretty secure cap on the point. Offense, or sorry, defense going in to fight it again. I don't really agree with this. Colstay and now Mikolo are also going to be cleaned up and staggered. Now Lucio under threat as we see the Diva and the Winston chasing it out, looking for those kills. And, um, well, that's not good for the defense. They just got staggered big time. Oh no, and right now Insta Stay is trying to do that big flank a lot of players do, but he has no ultimate. He's like so banking on the fact they don't see him, and Diva just ran right by him. It looks like it will be enough as he does get the shots, but no, it doesn't get it. He gets cleaned up by Saburn in the end as he was not able to land that double headshot onto the Zenyatta. Zenyatta survives from the sound barrier, so does the other Reaper. And they're just going to continue to push forward here without too much of a threat. Saburn looking for those shots as he is. Got a, a decent angle here as most of the defense hasn't been able to properly set up. It is really just the tanks on the high ground, but there's going to be the jump down and the earth shatter, but really to no avail. Double dead eye coming out of challenge gets a few kills, and the defense seems to be stabilizing here. Only Ultraviolet and Chi are left right now, and Ultraviolet is going to be cleaned up on the way back out. I believe Chi will as well, and that is going to be the side of Monocle and Mustache Fire. Mustache and Monocle finally getting some ground here on the final section of Dorado, but that was not looking good for a while. It looked really bad. Their positioning, they were up taking the higher ground, which I guess is fine if you're uh, escorting the, you know, your payload underneath that bridge. But, you know, it just almost seemed like they were just giving away too much position. I guess right now they're trying to restabilize, try to regain their ults and see what's next. I mean, Instate now has ultimate, so that flank is going to be so much more effective. And they didn't look for it again. We're on the camera to burn. No one reacted to it. Colsey going to get the charge and take him out. And stay going to continue to get a lot of damage after that death blossom. Mikolaou takes out Ultraviolet. Colsey on the globe. And the only player left alive, Chi, is going to get cleaned up right after that. And that is going to be the team kill horn again. 
shot. In the side, a mustache and monocle here on the final section, definitely buying themselves even more valuable minutes. As we have the time on the clock being seven My minutes exactly right now, and this this is the kind of defense that you need to have if you're going to be having a good opportunity on your offense, or basically all of the opportunity that you want. Yeah, I'm super fraying right now because Mikolo has just got old. Um, Colstead just is building up a little check. Challenge is going to build up ult in a few seconds also. So they have a lot of very defensive things to counter out, you know, the McCree ult right now. So they got to rush quickly. They do. Graviton Surge is going to be going out in the background as we have Ultraviolet trying to get back. But Graviton Surge basically makes it so the defense doesn't have to do much work. Reinhardt's going to be the only player uh, along with Chi back alive as we did see Globe just respawn. Average Jonas does take out Inste as he's fighting out with Ultraviolet. And Mikolo on to Average Jonas. Good kills for them as it looks like Chi is going super low. Does get knocked out of his mech onto that Bunny Blaster. Will be cleaned up. And that, of course, leaves in the area the side of Ultraviolet on the escape plan. Hopefully, it can be life for him, but death is the other way back, and it looks like he will survive for now. And that's another push cleaned up, and like you said, it's getting scary. The time on the clock, well, stopwatch almost is irrelevant at this point. They have a minute left to finish the map and make the stopwatch something to actually influence the game. Yeah, no, that's for sure. But right now, it's just they're trying to keep on trying that same exact push to go upper and go lower and just maybe change it up a little bit. But now they got lower ground and it gets high ground right now. Let's see how they take care of it. So Burn, he's the one to be looking for. As he was the one lighting up the kill feed when everything was falling apart before. High pit the dead eye doesn't get anyone, but the earth shatter. <laughs> that's going to do a lot. Colsty, it's on 2 3 4, and they're going to be able to take out Chi as well. There was a death blossom, I believe. That was uh, uh, Ultraviolet. Your insta is not exactly sure. As one of the both of them are at a decent ulti charge was cancelled halfway through. Chi is going to be able to take out Colstein. The offense is making a push right now. Saburn looking for those shots, but Hype ends up winning the duel. Even though he had the Discord aura on him, but his team goes ahead and cleans it up with them. They are going to go ahead and try to get onto the point here. Trying to find the best hero to chase out as it is going to be Insta on that tracer. Trying to stall it for as long as possible. We'll go into overtime point, guys. This is going to be a longer then a nine minute time total here is too bad. Is going to take out Insta. Naka on to Average Jonas. And right now, I think this might be actually not even a tough stopwatch. As there's going to be their shutter that comes out from Colsty in the background. After that, Graviton Surge. And there's no one left from the offense there. Looks like Saburn was able to switch over to the Winston and get on there on the point. But that's just going to be to delay it and just add a chance. But a chance is not a guarantee. And that is going to be a progression based. Stopwatches do not matter. They either convert or they don't. And that is the benefit of the new competitive format that Blizzard has added. As it has been out for a few months now, but um, or two months now. And hopefully in the next competitive season we'll be getting the stopwatch formula or format in the actual competitive ranked game. But also it'll just make it so much easier for the casters as we will have that built into the engine. But for now, go ahead and fly back over to it. There will be a golden rectangle. And that will be the victory and hopes for the sides of Mustache and Monocle and BX3. Well, if they can stop the payload from getting there, one way or the other, they will be going on into the round of eight. Ooh, I was about to criticize Naka for holding on to his uh, his uh, Zenyatta ult for that long, but that ended up being the, the um, game-winning difference when he was able to shield Tracer from all that initial damage. Tracer is so good at holding points because you basically have two lives. If you go low enough and it's been like less than six seconds, you pop your, uh, your recall and you're back to full health. And the fact that she doesn't have to do that for such a long time because she's in the middle of Zenyatta ultimate, that's obviously really good. Um, and it's actually a small tracer trick you can actually do is if you combo that and you stay in the same area for six seconds, you actually wouldn't recall back to your original location, which may be um, like in your spawn or something like that. You actually would recall back on site, which uh, would continue the contest value. So that's actually a small trick. And I think that's actually what allowed them to kind of recover and retake that point. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that, and I, I mean, it is a situation where you you need to be thinking about that and that ahead of time, but at the same time, it is a risk, like you said, if that transcendence wouldn't have gotten used at all and the payload would have been converted, well, you'd be talking about the opposite side of the story, so it is that risk versus reward, but something to talk about here is we are going to have Naka coming out on Anna to start it off with, and he hasn't switched yet, which is pretty good indication that they're going to go ahead and run out with it, so... Looks like they are going to be running the Anna Cop, a triple support comp. No, only double support. They're running no Zenyatta. This is definitely different than what we've seen from other teams. Yeah, I mean, it's different, but that's not going to get punished. Have you looked on the other side? She's on Symmetra right now, so that's not yeah. exactly the biggest support that you can kind of run in this situation, but they might not be punished as much, but this might be 
Ooh, the big flank coming out from the back from Genji. He's just kind of chilling right now, waiting for the right opportunity. Yeah, he will go ahead and clean up those turrets first, but that is going to be the key to let them know that he is back there. We'll be getting to him in a second as the offensive initiation goes out. It looks like Nana's, Nana's doing a lot right now. Naka going to help Colsty get those two kills as he's doing a lot of damage. We'll be able to heal him up and keep him alive. Nope, that's a good end going down to Chi, but does help out, take out Chi in the end. Naka gets the kill on Ultraviolet, and the only one left alive is going to be Saburn in the area. It's actually Lucio as well. It's too bad he was able to get back in the area, but he's cleaned up. McCree's 1v3, and he's going to be taken out really quickly. And Naka not only has the golden and a gun, but I got to say that play from him was very strong as he was able to get in there in the fray and get a great biotic grenade. But got to love the golden and a gun. A little bit biased here as I do love to play Anna. And it's definitely the golden gun I'll be investing in, but it's cool to see it without a Zenyatta. Not a triple support comp. Could open up the opportunities for other teams to experiment with this. Yeah, but I'll say this is based on the situation. The fact that she was just on Symmetra and just did not get her teleporter off, and she's inherently very squishy. So, yeah. teams that run, that's why she's kind of falling out of the meta, is just that you have so many better options right now that you're not going to accept your up or anything. Uh, Saburn now takes the fight in. That's a great Earth Shatter. Wow. Ooh, and this Death Blossom, or uh, Dead Eye, sorry, that could have been huge, but Colsty, great play by him. He's going to turn around and get that shield up and prevent any of the more damage coming out and actually saves his team in that situation. We see the fight, or the push continuing to happen as Hype is able to clean up Globe. And I agree with you that Earth Shatter plus the uh, Dead Eye could have been absolutely huge, but in the end, uh, it ends up, or Colsty's Earth Shatter ends up canceling up a lot of the effect of that Dead Eye with the flick of the barrier, and that's what you expect out of your Reinhardt play. Oh man, he's coming in the back line. This is the worst when Genji just has ultimate. You're trying to defend a point, and so dis uh, disjointed. You just respawn, and everyone's staggered. So. Yeah, they are going to get cleaned up for the most part. T is able to take a hype there. Was the transcendence from the Zenyatta to go ahead and buy them a little bit more opportunity? Graviton Surge is coming out from the side of the defense and see if they can capitalize on that. So far, it looks like they have been able to do a decent job. A few kills, but Colsty takes out Chi and the payload's continuing to move. If they don't get somebody on the payload to start contesting, it will. There we go. 1.89 meters, so it should be taken a second here with Colsty getting that kill and pushing him back. They're falling apart right now. Niccolo is going to be able to take out Globe, and Colsty swinging away as he's going to charge and try to get one more, but no, he ain't. not able to latch onto anyone as we will go into the overhead as this gets a little bit more hectic. Oh, defense trying to get on the point is too bad. It's going to continue to cart dance as much as possible. There's the Diva self-destruct. No kills gotten from that. As Average Jonas charge out and does get the charge onto Niccolo. It's a fair amount of damage onto him from that. That Graviton Surge, second one of the fight. It's going to do a lot of damage with the Earth Shatter, or the Swing Earth Shatter not grabbing too much. And right now, it looks like maybe the defense has been able to stabilize, not necessarily from the effect of the Ultimates themselves, but they have been able to take a better fight because of the positioning and the, I guess, just, uh, looks like challenge will, will go down. But uh, the Ultimates themselves didn't create the team wipe, but what I want to say is that the, the Graviton Surge, they did set up the follow-up advantage fights for them that, uh, that they were able to take it out. But that took basically the entire kitchen sink and two Graviton Surges to be able to stall it up here. Yeah, that was unfortunate. It's like when you're fighting right outside, the team spawn, and you kind of just, you keep on forgetting that the longer you stay there, the lower you get, the healthier they come out, and their walk is going to be a lot shorter than yours. So they just weren't able to sustain the pressure on that point. I think, honestly, they may have, I guess in a retrospect, I'm saying like, okay, yeah, like obviously I have 2020 right now, where it's just saying like they should have backed off, but at the time you're winning fights, you're winning small fights, but if you, if you can't take off, you know, you can't uh, team wipe or anything like that, you're kind of stuck in that situation. Yeah, no, it is a high-risk reward uh, situation, too, because if they do win, well, it will just kill the morale of the defense. But Saburn going to be able to get a kill, and Chi with the self-destruct double kill. A lot harder to get these days as players are used to it, but Hype will be finally able to answer and take out Saburn as Chi ends up chasing down uh, Kalenj and ends up taking him out. Hype is still alive somehow, and he's fighting it out. We'll be backing off now as he's getting chased down by a Diva, and Diva is able to clean him up, so they will be able to uh, defend still and able to buy themselves more opportunity and again this is so important considering it is not a stopwatch situation they have to defend the entirety of the clock overtime is their enemy in this situation not their friend yeah right now actually right now it might be pretty interesting on the offense both sitting on instay and hyp on both of their ultimates colsey's gonna get her shadow up very soon 
I would say if I'm uh, like a betting man that this is actually going to be their big, first big in games. They're going to try to hit in the point very quickly and try to get into the back lines. We are going to have that Dragon Blade going out like you said. See if we can get any kills off of it. Globe goes down now. He's going to be chasing down on him. The of Burn, that's a double kill. If you can get a few more, it would be ideal. But the two is going to be enough so far as Maka take out that average Jonas. And the defense is kind of falling apart. Self-destruct could be. No, it's nothing right now. As Miklo ends up taking out Ultraviolet and the defense is falling apart. Member after member, only a few remain. And... So looks like it is just going to be re uh, respawns right now that are mostly alive members. Saburn is going to be one of those. Chi will go down. Ultraviolet did die during that fight. And, of course, Globe did as we watched him fall down. And they are going to try to get back on the point as fast as possible. But that self-destruct should zone them out. And the payload will get to the point. Offense being pushed back or uh, pushing back the defense now. And Saburn, great shots from him as he double taps the Genji and takes him out instantly. Hype going for the dead eye. How many sh No, one, one skull. But uh, it was, of course defense matrix so we'll go ahead and cancel it out and back off but the offense gets into the reactor phase and that gives them more opportunity here is again there is no stopwatch guys it was a progression base we'll go ahead and show you where the payload has to make it if it makes it over to the left hand side of your screen on that golden rectangle it is gg in the side of mustache and monocle will win yeah honestly that was very good uh discipline from from the offense on this point having only in stay burn his ultimate and hyp still has it naka just built up his all as well and oh man good gravitine search keeping them all together on on defense right now and they need to capitalize on it there is an earth shatter from ravage jonas but colsey's earth shatter is just a step better server and will be able to get the dead eye on the hype and Mikolo is able to get back up there and take him out so this is going to be a pretty hectic clash as we have a 5v5 here going on we're going to go ahead and get into the first view colsey as he's swinging away able to take out globe and it is going to be a dragon blade coming out from the side of insta as he's able to take out ultraviolet there's going to be the self-destruct coming out from diva but it was completely off the mark went over the wall and this is not boating well for the side of bx3 as they need to get their members out on the point as fast as possible so burn's going to be out there but their savage drone is onto the point going to be fighting it out with too bad as he takes a flashbang going to be bringing up the barrier for his team but didn't stay the kill feed that's what you guys need to be looking at as well as the fight colsey is able to take out average jonas and the kill feed is nothing but the side of blue which is the offense right now and ultraviolet well he has to fight it out with his only teammate too bad and if they go down they are going to have uh, um, basically a bad time continuing to defend S Saburn will be bringing out the Tracer to go ahead and help and too bad this cart dancing from is absolutely excellent and he is still alive but finally will go down to hype and now Saburn will finally get the backup of Globe but Globe goes down to hype as he gets himself a double kill and then stays able to take out Saburn this is just falling apart for the side of the defense they're not able to get any kills Chi will be finally able to answer and take out Naka but with the Dragon Blade coming out from Insta, maybe this will just be the end of the game. One minute, 11 seconds remains. Again, guys, it is not stopwatch. It will just remain all here on this card dancing. And too bad, not able to card dance hard enough. And the side of BX3 will go ahead and fall to Mustache and Monocle. And I would not have guessed that going into the bracket. But at the same time, Mustache and Monocle showing that they are a very strong team. And that defense is what set them up there in my opinion but what do you think of that match scribe wow that was that was really oh man that was so bad in the last point just like like i said before great ultimate discipline from the offense on that last point because it wasn't just about hey let's burn all these ultimates get a great push they knew they only needed insay's ultimate to really clear that point hyp held his ult and naka held his ultimate and by that time colsey had his ultimate back up and at that last point like thank goodness challenge didn't burn it earlier because he was able to propel them a little forward and it force a defensive um you know um oh man defensive lucio alt and just was able to kind of push them forward because when you're switching champions especially to defend that last point you switch on to winston uh, switch on to tracer you're abandoning all that ultimate buildup you have before that point so being able to keep your ultimates on offense up to that last point is so essential yeah no i completely agree with you and it just did not go well for them at all and um they, it really just felt like they, they had their moments, I guess. Yeah, they had a few of them for sure. BX3 was definitely not out of the game for the entirety of it, but it was definitely a situation where it just felt like it was always a arm wrestle with the side of Mustache and Monocle coming out slightly ahead. And that can be draining mentally as a player as well. When you get into those situations, you can get to that point where you start to say, well, we're getting close, guys, but we're never close enough. We're never close enough. We're never close enough. And then it's hard to overcome those mental barriers when they... Uh, solidify in place for a team but bx3 nonetheless they will be out mustache and monocle will be going on b fly has won their match versus team canker so we will be watching mustache and monocle and b fly in a best of eight is there anything that you wanted to go ahead and finish up before we go ahead and send it off into some music and get it set up for the stream 
Honestly, watch out for HYP. As as much as uh, you know, I didn't want to say that, but he carried that game. His his play on McCree was so good, able to cancel out Severn in a lot of cases, and very early on in the match, especially on defensive sides, he was able to be that you know that DPS that was able to hit from the back line and able to do a lot of damage. And if you looked at it on defense, he was the only DPS in that entire situation. So, keeping a player and having a player who's that skilled and that comfortable on McCree is definitely a win. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Honestly, at the end of the day, it was really him that was out dueling Saburn and shutting down Saburn too. I mean, there was quite a few situations to punctuate that point where it was really just hype getting the outright better of Saburn. But nonetheless, guys, we'll be getting into the next match here in just a moment. Like I said, it will be B-Fly versus Mustache and Monocle, and that will be a best of three. It is going to be quarterfinals and on that we will be will be doing best of threes in the finals will be a best of five these players are playing for up to 100 points in the monthly cup as well as 150 euro this is the esl go for overwatch cup at number 10 of course this is raptor zow if you want to follow me on twitter you can as well as you guys are listening to the other voice is scribe with a one instead of an i on twitter ow you can follow him there and that's in the bottom left of your screen as well as follow at esl overwatch for more information more esl cup tournament um, updates you guys can go ahead and do that there but we'll be kicking it to some music getting this next game set up for you guys and again b fly versus mustache and monocle will be just around a corner here for the esl go for eu overwatch cup at number 10 again guys thank you and we'll be right back with the next game in just a moment 